Bless the Lord. If you can stand for a moment in reverence and respect for the Word of God, I'm going to read in your hearing our text, which was the epistle to the Galatians, this fifth chapter, the beginning at the first verse. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Because I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are justified by the law, and ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avail of anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you, that ye should not obey the truth. Yeah. This persuasion cometh not of him yes, that calleth yes, yes, you. Yes, yes. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify these truths in our heart. Truly, we bless the Lord for his favor and his grace, and thank you for your, amen, faithfulness to the things of God, and faithfulness in spite of the noise. You have pressed your way, and we appreciate that. And as pastor, we applaud your faithfulness. We applaud the fact that you yet believe God. Yes, yes. I remember yes. talking to a couple of the, the old saints years ago, and I'd see them in the church, or see them in the uh, uh, hospitals, or see them in the stores, and they would. I'd say, "How you doing, mother? Or how you doing, brother?" He said, "I'm still holding on." Because they recognize there's hope in Christ Jesus. They recognize that their, their labor, they recognize that their service, they recognize that their faithfulness was not in vain. It's a good thing to trust God. It's a good thing to hold on to what God has promised. For God will not break a promise. God will keep his word. See, God's promise to us is not like we promised to somebody else. When God makes a promise, it's a covenant. It's an agreement to which God says, I agree to do, glory to God, what I said. Yeah. And you can take God at his word. Well, last week we uh, started out of Galatians and we were talking about running on empty. And we're going to finish that up. And I thank the Lord for the word of God because the word of God is right. It's teachable. It's able to... Uh, encourage us to build us up as we put our trust in his word. We talked about the church at Galatea and they were having issues with circumcision and uncircumcision, but the whole point of the matter was they lost sight of the truth of God's word. Amen. They lost sight of the fact that Paul was not trying to give them a custom or something they had to do, but Paul was trying to lead them by the anointing of the Holy Ghost so that they could walk in faith Believing, And that is the whole purpose of the gospel, is that we would believe it and walk in the faith, believing it, to change and transform and renew our lives so that we can be what the word of God declares you to be. Amen. I'm glad about that. That's why you can speak to somebody and you can speak over somebody. And they can be just as blessed when they receive it. Amen? God is faithful to perform his word. Paul was striving to exhort the Galatians to stand fast in the gospel or the truth. He wanted them to believe it, receive it, hold fast to it. He, he, he determined to expose the difference or the divide between being religious and being spiritual. How many of us know what it is to be religious? Come on now. Amen. All of us have had occasions to try to do it ourselves and make it happen. But God said there's a difference with being religious and or being spiritual. And Paul was trying to encourage the church at Galatea. He said, listen, he says, you did run well. He said, you started off real good. You were doing real good. He said, but who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? It wasn't about your running at all as it was about you obeying 
the truth. Last week, we just gave the example when King Saul felt that he would appease God and do for God what God couldn't do for himself. They said, Lord, I saved the best. Prophet Samuel said, listen, listen, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. He let him know that truth was the issue. Believing God in the truth was the issue. And today we have so much deception, so much lies, so much heresy. But Paul said, listen, 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 you did run well. Who did hinder you? And you should not obey the truth. He encouraged righteousness by faith. Amen. And it being motivated by love. Thank God for the love of God, which is imparted to us as we put our trust in him. We picked up on last week. We won't pick up on last week. We, Paul was trying to exhort them, not only exhort them, but to correct the church in their failure if you will, to follow the truth. And I said last week that truth is the quality or state of being true, a fact or belief that is accepted to be true. Uh, truth is factual, not fiction, evidence by faith. Evidence by faith. You did run well, who did hinder you? That you should not obey the truth. Paul said, even though you're doing real good, fail in your embracing and believing the truth. He said, as opposed to believing the truth, you, you were averted, you took an aversion, you went a different direction, and you became sidetracked from the truth. When you're sidetracked tracked from the truth, you begin to embrace error, you begin to embrace a lie, and you believe it to be the truth. Amen. Amen. This persuasion in the eighth verse of Galatians, the fifth chapter, he says, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. In other words, God is not the one who's sidetracking you. He said, this persuasion come of one who is our enemy of the soul, our enemy of our lives, that which one who distorts the truth. How many know that the enemy distorts the truth? That's right. But he encourages us so he can come even as an angel of life to make you believe that the truth is a lie. Hmm. Amen. Something you embraced years ago. I find it today that a lot of people, people said, I will never change. I always believe this. And you find them years later now they're embracing a lie because they've departed from the truth. Amen. What goes up must come down. That's a truth. That's gravity. But people today feel, oh no, there's a suspension there. There's a, there's a process where you might float for a minute. What goes up still comes down. So it doesn't matter how you fix it up. Don't know how, matter how you mix it up. It's still a law in place that's true. Amen. So the Apostle Paul continues to rebuke the, the, the church of Galatea because he encourages them to believe the truth so that they could change their mind about what they were thinking because there was a brother who had, in their congregation or in their midst who was distorting the truth. Everybody has something to say. Yeah. Everybody has something they want you to know. Yeah. But if it's a lie, it's still not the truth. That's why a lot of times when people talk and you listen, you got to have discerning ear. You got to be able to divide what is false and what is true. And thank God for the Holy Spirit, because the Bible said it leads and guide us into all truth. Last week I said that the doctrine of Christ is truthful, it's distinct, it sets the bar high, it's, an, it's influence through influence and authority. Jesus taught them with authority. The scribes and the Pharisees opened up their mouth and said what they heard. But the Bible said that Jesus was not like that. He taught them with authority. Yeah. And that can be found in St. Matthew 7 and 29. The Apostle Paul is, it was such a teacher and what was such a, 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 an example that he said on one occasion, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. He let his life be an example because he recognized this, that truth does transform your life. And when you put your uh, faith in the truth of God's word and recognize that St. John 14 said, I'm the way, the truth. And the life, no man comes unto the Father but by me, that your life will be changed. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
You don't have to come up empty. Amen. You don't have to come up short. Amen. You don't have to come up wanting. You can be you can be steadfast. You can be unmovable. You can be at a place where you always have the bar set high, trusting God for the results. I don't listen. I don't try to be perfect, nor can I even be perfect. But I understand this, that the perfection is in Christ Jesus. And if the bar is set high, it's God's responsibility, as I believe his word is true, to transform my life so that I can be all that he would have me to be. Glory to God. I can be the pleasing one. And my life can be such that when I look over my life, I can be grateful and thankful that if it had not been the Lord on my side, my life wouldn't be as my life is. Amen. So I'm grateful to God for stability. I'm grateful for God for stamina. I'm grateful for God that I yet believe. Many have fallen by the wayside and don't believe. So I'm grateful that I'm yet believing the truth. Yes, thank you. Oh God, I thank you for your word. I said it last week that uh, running on empty can be a distraction from the truth. And I gave an example where it says in the last days, or in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, it says, Now the Spirit ex uh, speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Basically, folk be walking around like a hypocrite, like an actor, amen, acting a role and believing that the role is real and believing that it's of truth when it really is a lie. Oh, God. Don't let, don't, don't let me get on a liar because folk, some folk lie just to be lying. Some folk lie just when they open their mouth, they're lying. I was saying on yesterday, on, uh, the other day, I was thinking about this, and we gave an example about a hypocrite on last week, but I thought about Ananias and Sapphire in the, in, in Sapphira in the uh, book of Acts when the church had just, amen, began to rise and multiply as a result of, of time after Pentecost, and they were on a move, and God was speaking and moving mightily. The Bible said there were signs and wonders. Yes. In other words, all the apostles had to do was do what God said, and God brought about the miraculous yes. because it was a time of conversion. It was a time of faithfulness. Folk needed to believe because they were under uh, multiplied pressure. So God was, uh, uh, was pouring out the Holy Ghost in max, in maximum uh, weight. And here we have Ananias and Sapphira, where they said that everybody brought this stuff, brought this stuff to the apostles and laid it at their feet and said, this is what we have to give. And I find it interesting that the Bible says that they lied about what they had to give, speaking lies and hypocrisy. And not only did they lie about what they had, they were in, uh, listen, they, they were in conspiracy with one another to lie. Mm. Here's a husband and wife who owned it first, even though God gave it. They owned it themselves. God said, God, God wasn't saying give it if you ain't got it. Yeah, yeah. They gave it and said they didn't give it. Uh -huh. uh, 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 or should I say we gave it all? Uh -huh. And then Peter says to them, why have the devil uh -huh. caused you to lie to the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. when it was yours to uh -huh. keep? Oh, Lord have mercy. God knows what you had. He don't need your money. He needs you. Because God wants a surrendered soul that he might be an instrument on his behalf. So whatever you have, God gave you. Yeah. So when you release it in worship to him, he said, you ain't got to lie about it. Yeah. I know you had it before you got it. Thank you, Lord. And here is a couple conspiring together to lie. This is the time we live in, a time of deception. Oh, a time of deception. And not only are we living in a time where you can be distracted from the truth, you can be deceived by the truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 16, it says, but pro uh, shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth the canker of whom Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth, have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, 
The foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Here's a case in the church. Here's a case in the church Timothy had to deal with, where there were those going around saying that basically that Christ had come back. They were saying, listen, they, they listen to the point. They were saying that the resurrection is past. There's no need to live uh, uh, right anymore because the Lord is back. All that's done. You don't have to embrace that anymore. You don't have to believe in the second resurrection. He said it's not going to happen. Yeah. And it was Philetus and Hymenus coming and, and spreading this lie. And then the Apostle Paul had to let them know, well, they're spreading such a lie where people think it's no longer, listen, any benefit to live right. right, right. So Paul says, he said, nevertheless, even in spite of their lies, right. or even in spite of the lies, he said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. God has not changed his mind about deception or deceiving, but and lies, God's foundation is still sure. Yeah. Yeah. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, that the Lord knoweth them that are his. God knows everything about you. Don't let nobody deceive you that it's not worthwhile living right. Woo, glory. He said, everybody named the name of Christ. He said, everybody that walks under the banner and the humility of Christ Jesus and is under the blood, he said, let them depart from iniquity. Yeah. Mm, that's a genuine sign. Regardless of the lies that have been spread, yeah. regardless of them that say it's not worthwhile living right, it's not worthwhile believing God. Yes, it is. Because when you run on empty, you're subject to be deceived. You got to renew your mind. When you run on empty, you're subject to run into deception. You got to renew your mind and recognize that God's word is foundational. It stands the test. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm, it stands the test. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Yeah. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. That's right. Yes, That's right. Yes, yes, yes. I can rely on it. I can trust in it. Woo, glory. Oh, Lord, I thank you that I can run to the rock of my salvation. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God, and be assured of the fact that God will do what he has promised. Yes, he will. And keep thank his you. word. Yes. Running on him also can be a, a, a denial of the truth. 1 John 2 and 21 says, listen, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, that no lie is of the truth. Boy, that's hard to comprehend, but it's the truth. No lie is of the truth. You can't lie and call it the truth. You can't be a liar and call yourself truthful. Mm. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Look at this now. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. We live in a time today where they're not only denying the Father, they're denying the Son. They're denying the finished work of Jesus Christ. Yes. But listen, that's a lie. Amen. All that Christ did, he did because he promised it. All that Christ did was purposed by God for the purpose of the church being established. It's foundational. It's what God had determined beforehand. So all them that say that Christ ain't Christ is a liar. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 I don't care what, what cult, what group, what religion. If you have not acknowledged the Son, glory to God, you don't have the Father. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. I'm going to split it down the middle. I'm going to do it this way. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. If Christ is not Lord of all, yes. he's not Lord at all. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory. It's easy to run on empty. Easy. And embrace religion, religious, <laughs> religion, and being, being, being that which is done by works as opposed to that which is done by faith. Amen. Woo, glory. Amen. Running on it involves waiting on God as he strengthens you. Oh, God. You may feel 
that God is about to do something in your life. Well, guess what, beloved? If God has promised it and you believe it, and the truth cannot lie, wait on it. All you can do with a promise is wait on it. The Bible declares in Psalms 27 and 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Even though you feel like you're running on empty in the sense that you're getting a little weary, you still believe in God. He said, wait on me and be of good courage, and I'm going to strengthen your heart uh -huh, uh -huh. by the truth that you believe in. Oh, God, God, show yourself mighty. I'm always saying that. God, show up. Do what you got to do. Oh, God, push your weight around. God, because your word declares that nobody, no thing can come up against you. Amen. If God be for me, glory to God. Yes. No devil, no nothing, no thing can come up against you. Amen. Ooh, glory. That's a truth, beloved. I can wait on that and take in the fact that regardless of what's ahead of me for Monday, God has my back. Yes, Ooh, you. glory. So when I even sense that I'm running a little bit on empty, uh -huh, uh -huh. God renew my mind yeah. that I might take you again at your word. Oh, God, I thank you. When you wait on God to be renewed, God has a, has, has a promise to do it. Amen. God has promised to do it. Isaiah 40 and 31, but wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord uh -huh. yeah. shall renew their strength. Hmm. God said, listen, listen, as you wait on me, I'm going to revive that which you believe. So it, 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 it'll come to the point that while you're waiting, you'll believe it more. Glory to God. Because that will be the motivation to say that God ain't finished yet. Yeah. That God about to do something. How many times have you been in a situation and said, listen, God about to move in this place. Yeah. God's about to move in my situation. I sent something in my spirit that God is about to do something. God said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He said, wait on the Lord and I'll strengthen your heart and keep you anticipating my move. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting, huh? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. You don't see it, but you know it. I'm waiting for you, God, to do what you have promised. Yeah. They that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run, they'll, they shall run and not be weary. An eagle always looks uh, from the highest height at its prey or at its sub uh, substance, whatever it's going for. If you ever see an eagle in the air, they're looking at it from an airplane. God said, listen, you'll mount up with wings as eagles. You'll see it like he sees it. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. I used to sing a song in, 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 in one of the churches. I had a little small storefront. They talked about, I believe God. I believe God. They'd sing that song. I believe God. Because they recognized this, that their faith was motivated and renewed by the fact that God could not lie and they believed it. Amen. That God would renew my mind, yeah. renew my spirit. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. God is able to sustain you. Mm. I don't want to be like the church in Galatea. You didn't run well. Who did hinder you? Because I want to be aware of the deceptions. I want to be aware of the distractions. I want to be aware of the stuff yes. that could cause me cool. to not believe the and truth. Uh -huh. Considering the climate we live in today, oh, we live in a rough climate, but considering the climate we live in today, full of unbelief, full of deception, and anxiety seems right now to be taking its course. Stores are empty, folk are looking crazy, everybody's upset, nobody can explain it, but God is still able. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. God is still able. We have hope because we put our trust in his word. I take comfort in knowing that God is truthful and that God said regardless of a virus, regardless of a sickness, regardless of poverty, regardless of a situation, yeah. regardless of the circumstance, he said he would never leave glory to God, never leave yeah. nor was 
but let him, and we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God loves us with an eternal love. Yeah. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. I am, I, listen, I am encapsulated in the love of God because God on my behalf loves me. Oh, God, I thank you. A little bit, little bit more in that scripture, the second verse. He says, herein is love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in the world. Amen. Love made perfect. God said, listen, not only did I encapsulate you in my love so that you might have power and wisdom, he said, I've given you boldness, and that boldness is that which I've deposited in you even to be adequate and more than powerful, even in the day of judgment. Yes. Amen. In other words, God said, listen, I'm giving you so much love and so much character that you can put your trust in me because as I am, so are you. Oh, God, I thank you for the love of God. Oh, thank you for being able to walk and operate in the love of God. Yes. Even those things I don't know, I'm still operating in the love of God. I don't need to know it all because God knows it all. All I got to do is trust him for the results. God, I'm about to do this, God. You know, listen, you know my money getting low. You know my situation getting tight. And God said, keep operating in my love. He said, I'm going to give you boldness to know that I love you with a divine love. And no man, boy, woman, or girl, or devil, amen, nothing can take that from you. Because God is love and we dwell in him. Thank you. Mm. Oh God, there is no fear in love because perfect love casts about fear because fear hath term torment. He that feareth, glory to God, is not made perfect in love. God said, listen, I deposited in you my love. Therefore, it's strengthening you and renewing your mind that the love of God will push out the false evidence appearing real so you won't be dealing with fear and anxiety because you know the love of God will overwhelm it all. Yes. Mm. Because as he is, glory to God, so are we in the world. Yes. Thank you. What did Jesus tell the disciples? In the world, you're going to have tribulation. That's right. He said, but be of good cheer. Why? Because as he is in the world, so are we. He said, be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. Yeah. Now, if he has overcome the world, that makes us, woo, overcome us. <laughs> Thank, mm. Thank God for the love of God that is able to renew us and refresh us and keep us. I may be concerned about them things, some things, yes. but I'm not fearful. Amen. There's not a drop of anxiety in me. Listen, I'm, a, I'm more anxious about my tire getting fixed on my car. Amen. Than worried about the constraints of the world. Amen. Why? Because every time I find myself yeah. seemingly getting weak and, I, and I'm tempted to run on empty. God renews my mind and says, listen, 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 listen. I love you with an eternal love. There's nothing you can do to break that love. I love you even before. Look at this. Look how he loved us. He loved us before the foundation of the earth. He loved us. He called us before we were, if you will, that which we became to be now. He called us. From our mother's womb, he called us. He loved us before we existed. So he said, therefore, fear perfect love casteth out all fear. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, listen, running on empty, feeling discouraged, feeling weary is all a part of our humanity. But he says, if we renew our mind, yes. We'll wait on the Lord, yeah. be renewed in our strength, yes. mount up like eagles, run and not be weary, and we'll walk. Oh, God, I thank you, and not faint. 
Amen. All empowered Hallelujah. by the Spirit of God, which strengthens us to believe the truth. The Bible says the truth shall not only set you free, it'll make you free when you put your trust in him. The remedy for running on empty, the remedy for anxiety is to renew your mind and put your trust in him. God bless you.